Hey there, everybody. Peabye, this is Tevo DRC of the Apostolic Crossbody Unity Movement for Men and Women in Ministry, Leadership, and Family. <clears throat> and it's an opt in, there's no membership, it's you just simply bear the fruit, which would be when you go to church, when you live your life, when you're at home by yourselves. You go before you're before the Lord and you're walking it out in James three seventeen fruit resembling the wisdom of God with God's help. It's gonna take him and his help to resemble that under pressure, which is also Ephesians four, meekness and lowliness and long suffering, endeavoring to keep the bonds of peace together, as well as it would also try to be with uh with the Ephesians 5.21, which is mutual submission in the fear of the Lord with the Lord's help. And I'm saying this out there so we can get this started because it's a matter of resembling the Holy Spirit personal self-government on and off the job, on and off the work as unto the Lord for the community which is transformed, which gives God glory, gives everybody respect, equal opportunity, real respect, and it also affects society. That's the main one. So there's when you see the transformed community, it's affected the society. There is less carnality, less immaturity, less winds of doctrine, it says, less con artists. All right. So we're going to talk about that another day more. But we're just trying to use this one to disclaim what we're really after. Nothing personal, no agenda. You know, we're looking to make people go to church and enjoy it, really like it. Help Hebrews 10.25, not go there and then turn into somebody's property. You know, they don't have to fear that they're going to be regarded as chattel or worthless compared to, you know, the type that they prefer. That it's Because, you know, I mean, really, it's gotten that bad. It really has. I can't believe it. So we're just shouting it out to stir it up to make it rethink and evaluate what we're really doing because a lot of it is dross, it's not effective, it hurts people. And that's why I'm making a big deal out of it, to say let's clean it up or God's going to clean it up. That's really what it is. So I'm going to title this one, I Heard the Witch Watchers Call My Name. And this is how, I'm going to give some examples over, you know, of what really got my attention to start this spirit of truth study and Hebrews 10.25, Fellowshipping with the Saints Purpose. Got our Bible college coming through this. Whenever that gets ready, got the Welp Studies, Western European Levitical Patriarchism, which is old-timey shepherding, big boss law, covering all that. We've got it down. And we're not doing it dogmatically, but emphatically to get it delivered. And that's what we're doing. I'm going to have to do this another moment because I want to make sure you think we're you know we're grounded in God's holy word this is part one of I heard the witch watchers call my name <laughs> who'd have thought as a Christian growing up from Jesus people and Baptists hanging out with Catholics and African American Christians and all kinds of Christians Vietnamese never would have known that this goes on in certain doctrinal ranks and they're giant they've gotten huge all right so we believe in the father son and holy spirit he's made us all one he spoke through jesus christ as his life role modeled in matthew mark luke and john in ministry his relationships with all colors all people males and females his mother you can read that how jesus acted and reacted in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when he was alive on the earth. But he did for us. Rose again after suffering on the cross for our sins. We believe in eternal salvation. And then we look at Paul for a lot more in other doctrines in the New Testament. There is no such a thing as covering. There is prayer covering. There is uh, God's love covers a multitude of sins, errors and omissions, ignorant behaviors. We believe that. But there is chain of command and Ephesians 5.21, and then there's a 5.24, excuse me, five, uh, chapter 4, which is mutual submission and the fear of the Lord, followed by walking it out in meekness and lowliness and long suffering, endeavoring to keep the bonds of peace together. So I'd look at Christ, then Paul, and I'd note that before Paul was Paul, he was Saul and LP, 
a Levitical patriarch of the first degree who murdered the new move of God with the Saul spirit. And that is like the Old Testament Saul spirit that trotted, pursued David. The word curse, murderous Saul spirit, pursuant and aggressive. So after Paul got the revelation, he got the, you know, lifted out of the law, he became Paul. And God gave him through revelation and time the mysteries of the Gentiles and to write two-thirds in the New Testament, which we believe is really a parallel to looking at the community part of relationships and respect trying to get the bride of Christ, the diverse bride, walking it out in meekness and lowliness to resemble the bride of Christ that transformed and affects society, as I said. But it's also a sign of the marriage supper of the Lamb, the Philadelphia Love Walk Church of Revelation, the letter of the church, that the only church whose doors will never close will be the Philadelphia Brotherly, Motherly, Sisterly Love Church. You can read that for yourself. So we're speaking frankly and speaking... Um, victoriously because I never would have known in my life that false doctrine even occult and witchcraft were now in a lot of the churches at the grassroots like I said I was sent to celebrity but I was sent to mini micro black and white and brown and everybody's the same to me I do not care I'm not impressed I've never been impressed by how big your church is or how small I'm not impressed by your outer court I'm impressed by if you really know the Lord or not, the true deal. That's what I'm looking for, which is like Paul. I attempt to know, I endeavor to know nothing except Christ and Him crucified. And that is all I'm you know, really looking for. I do notice, you can't help but notice they're black or white or brown, or if they're Christian, charismatic or not. But we are pro all kinds because nobody knows it all. We're pro all races, because, but we want to now isolate what can help people want to go to church not avoid it racism would make me want to avoid it misogyny has made me want to avoid certain kinds occult has really made me quit the dysfunctional charismatic and prophetic i listen you can find holy spirit but it's you know rare but you can find it without that we're still looking for more and want to have some more all right so we want to talk on theology and it's about relationship theology based on not the law, but using the Old Testament, revering it, the precepts, the teachings, the anointing on it, but not making it legalistic. When you make something legalistic in the New Testament, you're going to be able to accuse them with it. I caught you in sin. It has that sound of I gotcha, the Pharisee sound of accusation. Levitical equals critical in these days. And so I'm looking at God's holy word as the root of all this teaching. And there is such a word as reproof and correction. And that's some of it. When you notice this person who happens to be sent, chosen by God to be sent out in a Western European female earth suit that doesn't believe in covering because it's not in the first in the New Testament, who never had an issue with it till they acute, they jumped me in public along with many others that were white women and maybe some black and these were never black people, but that would be a red flag for a doctrinal stu student like myself or anybody if they've never heard of that, and then that led the door to you know uncovering the bath waters, the bath waters of really good worship, but a lot of it could have really bad backwaters of demonic false teaching oppression occult right now that's where the witch watching comes from and the Lord sent me throughout the United States in different seasons to study his body since age 24 when I was in 1976 and he didn't tell me what it would be I had no agenda he just said I want you to study the body of Christ it'll be males and females all kinds all colors you know their doctrines their red flag buzzwords their pet peeves their music their style and then one day I'll have you build bridges of understanding between them and now is the time so I had no idea a cult would be in my radar to speak on I had no idea that I'd need to be delivered from just going to church from some of this stuff because it sticks with if they pray against you and all this demonic stuff you do pay a, it takes a toll even if you're aware you think what is I used to think be honest I would think false teaching, watch out for false teaching, that means they don't believe in Jesus as Savior. 
they do things to people they I believe they don't be you know so then you think first these past they believe in Jesus as Savior it's the false teaching that is false authority which is also a big deal to Jesus in Matthew 7 21 23 was the downside of this dysfunction that I never knew existed and I hope I never go through that again but because I did I knew no joy and I have you know we're only passing through I forgive them but it's so rough on people in the last days when they just want to go to church they get accused for showing up in the wrong type the wrong color the wrong gender the wrong vibe and that's why we're making a big deal out of it if I go to a Catholic church they would never do that to me if I go to any Baptist church they wouldn't do that to me any black church it's one spiritual kind Levitical patriarchy, Levitical matriarchy. So we have to stir it up to deliver it. Get them mad. But they can be mad all they want. This is for Jesus. Jesus tossed over the temple money changers' tables because it was zeal for his father's house. He wasn't angry. He wasn't envious. He wasn't there, right? You know, he was there to because he had compassion for the common people who could no longer feel respected or valued in God's house. That's why I point out. In another film, I pointed out the difference between Hebrews 10.25 today, which is the command everybody knows, don't forsake fellowshipping with the saints, as some have. Now we're telling you why. Paul gives you the two escape clauses, some of this. But we also point out Isaiah 56 verse 7 is the balance to how it used to be in the uh, fruit, the type of climate created in a fellowship that was God commanded his blessing there and you can read that yourself all right i want to talk about second timothy three that's a huge chapter for diagnosing dysfunction there's two things in this pauline chapter to mentor us all mentor me mentor you all right paul says in the last days there'll be perilous times i used to think that was outside the church the non-believers now i'm firmly convinced we better check ourselves out first It's the fruit that you want to go down if you are a leader, mama, trainer, pastor, leader. Check your own heart, but check that fruit to see, is it your group? How do they behave? And then train them. Secondly, the good news is, in the same chapter, a giant chapter, 2 Timothy 3, you can read the verse that is the root of my whole ministry God gave me back in 1986. I'd been a Christian even involved in outreach until the Lord called me to a ministry and he downloaded a picture called the encouraging word and sec- a Bible open to 2 Timothy 3 16 and 17 and this is the part that's that that is the cure the answer for the first part of 2 Timothy 3 1 through 5 all right so if we have the last days lovers of themselves all that well what's going to take a lot of teaching so let's begin with that verse 2 Timothy 3, 1, 16 and 17 says, God's word, God's word inspired, it is profitable for instruction, for doctrine, for correction and reproof, so that the man and woman of God, the human of God, will be thoroughly furnished. All right? It's profitable to be thoroughly furnished physically, emotionally, financially, materialistically, uh, in a relationship all these different ways and getting yourself your heart ready to meet the Lord should he come sooner or on the final day it's very profitable to be ready <laughs> to meet the Lord it really is so with that said I want you to know that when we teach the Word of God we're just trying to declare what it says we're trying to encourage people who are doing right the remnant we're trying to stir up and you know cause people people to evaluate what they're really believing and listening to but to the others so God's Word is inspired it's supernatural it has qualities that you can have the logos and the rhema the logos are the facts the knowledge about it but you can get the rhema by sitting with God reading your Bible and then one day out of you know God will sort of quicken a verse to your spirit which is just for you your situation and you will know it by the Spirit of God in your heart that's the rhema so I believe in both the rhema and the spirit Jesus also said to the Sadducees in the Bible he said you err Sadducees 
because you don't believe in the supernatural. They were sad, you see. Okay, that's my interpretation. So, the Bible is inspired. Uh -oh. And it is profitable, but it also has to be rightly divided because some people either... Jesus told the Sadducees, who were not for the supernatural, they didn't believe in the resurrection, they were trying to trap him about the woman who was married and the husband died and the Jewish tradition was that the uh, wife was to marry the next person and he died after she married and it kept going to the last person so they said well Jesus who on the up in heaven who will the lady be married to my funny part that I always think is boy after the third husband and they kept dying as all the brothers I wouldn't want to be those last brothers <laughs> but anyway that isn't really the point that's not the teaching the way the teaching is what Jesus told the Sadducees all right he said, you err, not knowing the scriptures or the power of God. So in my opinion, after what I've thought for like 20 some years about this, all right, Jesus said, you err, that means us err, I err, because I don't know all the scriptures. I don't know all the power of God. Therefore, I got to go to God at certain seasons and times and learn more about one side or the other. So about the word, you have to know what's in the word, the logos, good teaching, with the rhema, how to use it how to renew your mind, what's the power of supernatural, standing on the promises, claiming when he leads you to, not to do it out of formula, and all that, the depths of the word of God, and then rightly divide it so it's not under the law. The law triggers accusation and attack, and that is what prompted me to study, because I'd never been under attack like I got when I went through dysfunctional false teaching. For many years not knowing what it was that I was picking up you know and that I saw many people attacked similar that was the other part so we're not upset with people not at all we're concerned for Jesus and his houses and the lost that's really it for the and the community not being attractive to bring transformation to society all right so not knowing the scriptures is one thing to work on if the Lord quickens you, you work on it, and he'll show you what to do and how to do it. The other part is not knowing the power of God. Well, what would that be? That would be about the Holy Spirit, the inward witness, Jesus, signs and wonders, book of Acts type things, praying, praying in the Spirit, uh, moving in the gifts, healing, laying on of hands, all these things. And I'm not telling you as dogma. I'm not telling to accuse you, but I'm saying sometimes your your big mystery of why you can't get ahead or something is wrong, you can't figure it out, is because you haven't really asked God for more wisdom and advice about do you need more Bible to know his provision in the Bible and his protection in the Bible? Or do I know only a little bit or do I use it to club people with, you know, the black and white knee-jerk reaction crowd? Or the other part is, what about the Holy Spirit? Am I scared of it? Am I think it's too difficult? Do I, do, uh, you know, I don't want to get fooled by it. I understand that. But we're bringing this out because we want it said through crossbody unity that you have your right to hear God on this topic and all these topics for yourself. But I'm going to be teaching on it because I believe in God's whole counsel, knowing the Word of God without the law, and knowing the Holy Spirit without being bossy fearful or flaky to the best of our knowledge and we'll talk later because out of this me studying being sent to study the Bible and the wonder working power this is where I found false teaching with the good Holy Spirit some really good Holy Spirit beautiful Holy Spirit so we want to talk on that another time but this is titled I heard the witch watcher call my name <laughs> and it is with humor but really sober at the same time God bless you. He loves you. This is Tavo DRC signing off for now. I don't know what else. I, I'm trying to turn it off now. Let's see if I can do it right. All right.